Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of From the Workbench with uh, ESU and we're going to continue into our our deep dive into the Loke programmer settings and how to set up some features on the Loke Sound 5 and today let's discuss some random sounds. So the random sounds are going to be things like oh your compressor, your radiator fan, uh, things that you don't necessarily want to have to trigger yourself. You want to hear them in the model and while you certainly could trigger them yourself you want some of these things to be somewhat automated so you're not constantly having to keep an eye on the locomotive. You want to run your trains, you want to pick up cars, you want to you know um, you, you don't necessarily want to run a real locomotive. I mean we give you those abilities so that you can manually do all of those things but mechanically these things are happening for a reason and we don't want to have to have that as our focus as we're as we're down working on our layouts so so let's learn where to set those up at so again some of those things that we're going to look at are maybe a short air let off a compressor shutters that would open over the radiator screens um, maybe some flange squeal uh, you know, all of those types of things. Mm -hmm. So if we go into the function settings tab, uh, which is you know, right here, and we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to see random functions. Now, even though we do give you all of those functions as a separate button that you can manually activate, we can also have those particular buttons themselves be set up as happening randomly. So as we down and we go down and we look here, the first one that we've set up automatically, and all of our defaults are set up pretty much this way. There may be a few differences depending on the file. Obviously, Steam's going to be a little bit different, but let's look at the diesel side of it for today. So if we, and, and, and you know, and I say that only because I have a diesel file pulled up, setting up the random functions, whether it's Steam, diesel, electric, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. If it could be your own recording of cows mooing, <laughs> it, it, you know, the, the randomness and the, the settings of the doing this are going to be set the exact same way. So, um, so that we have the ability to have eight different random sounds that are playing, and those are separate from each other. So you could have one overplaying the other and things like that. So let's look at the first one. So random number one. Um, so we see a couple things here. Stop, drive, driving sound, on, F11. So what does all that mean? So if we if we look to our right here, you now obviously F11 means that we're going to be pressing the F11 button randomly. The, the decoder is going to do this ourselves. Now if we've set up our file correctly and we look over in the information tab and under functions, if we've given it a name, the function button, and you know we have the name over here, so we were just talking about F11. So, just as an example, if I set this just to fan, this is where it's getting the information from to know what that button is. So, you know, again, I've set that to fan. Now we go back to decoder, back to the function tabs. I'm back on F11, and now if I just, all I'm doing is scrolling over, I'm not pressing any buttons, but you can see that that's my fan. So if you want to know for sure as you're setting up maybe a custom file with the function mapping, it's not going to necessarily know what's on each function button unless you set it up in that information tab. So um, if you're setting up files for maybe a customer, you're doing custom installs as a dealer or something like that, um, you may want to at least keep that in mind so that your customer knows what what it is that's on each function button and you can print that off as a sheet that maybe call it our bulletin um, you know and then we'll look at that at another time but uh, today let's deep dive into this this uh, random function feature so again now I know that I'm talking to in the first one I'm talking to my fan and it can be anything you want if you press the drop down menu you can scroll through any of the function buttons and keep in mind this doesn't have to be just a sound this could be a light um, it could be a firebox flicker although we do have a logic feature that kind of does play that randomly but it's just an example of something that could be a random item so again it just doesn't have to be a sound it could be a whole sequence that you set up in logic in a sound slot so lots of cool things can be done with this if you combine different types of things so and this one obviously like I've said this is the fan which happens to be the radiator fan that we've you know, maybe altered the name on a little bit so the first one we have here is stop so that means this will only play if it's stopped or if it's driven so or driving I should say so 
if the locomotive is moving in any way, stopped or moving, this is going to play. Now if I turn this off and I have it only as stop now, this will only play when the locomotive is stopped. If I turn this off and I, I leave stop off but have it on drive, it will only play while the locomotive is moving. So by having both of them checked, it's going to play all the time. That's not going to be a condition. It's it's basically um you know it it uh it can play whether it's moving or whether it's stopped it's pretty clear now the next box is only when the drive sound is enabled now the drive sound is typically on f8 so this would be basically sound slot one uh sound slot one is what we always use for the drive sound um that's your prime mover sounds that's your steam engine chuff um, you know, this slot one, whatever's in here, that's your drive sound. So if we look back at the function mapping, we can see that the prime mover is on sound slot one. This is on F8. So basically, if we go back to function settings now, what this is saying here is that we only want to play that when F8 is pressed. If the locomotive is started, um, then we want to play the sound. Now, maybe that doesn't apply to everything. Um, if we have a, certainly we want it to happen if a compressor is running because most compressors at a diesel locomotive are shaft driven off of the prime mover. So if the prime mover is not running, there's no way that the compressor could run. So that's, an, that's one that we definitely want to have this on. Um, maybe something like the air, the spitter valve, the Sarco valves, or the uh, pressure release valves, whatever you want to call them, lots of different names. A lot of rail fans and modelers call them the spitter valves. They just, pssst, pssst, pssst. Um, you know, all of those sounds. Um, they don't have to be playing when the prime mover is running. If you shut down the locomotive, often you'll continue to hear those. So that's a good example of one that maybe we would turn this off. It doesn't have to have the prime mover running when we play that. Um, radiator fan, which is what we're playing now, obviously, it would be running when the, the prime mover is running, so we want to leave that on. Um, triggered function, just a simple function button, as we mentioned already. The active minimum and the active maximum. So what this is, is the minimum amount of time that it's going to play for, and this would be the maximum amount of time that it's going to play for. So it's not a combination of the two, it's a random time period between, in this case, 2 seconds and 25 seconds. Um, it could play for 2 seconds, or it could play all the way up to 25 seconds when it starts to play. So that's what the, the active uh, settings are for. So it, it basically, if, if you wanted this to play, to continue to play for a longer period of time, um, you would want to obviously increase this. But at the moment, now it could still play for just two seconds, or it could play for up to 158 seconds. If you want it to always play longer, bring your minimum up as well. So now this will always play at least 120 seconds. It could play up to a maximum of 158 seconds. Now this timing is important, and as we create sound files, whether it's, it's us as ESU or yourselves, something to keep in mind is that time scales as well. Um, you know, and that's why we have fast clocks when we're having operating sessions and things like that. Uh, 10 seconds in the model world when you're playing a sound can be a really long time if you're having to wait for something. So just keep that in mind when you're setting up these, these minimum and maximum sounds. It can be a really long time when you're scaling things. <clears throat> that could, and if it's something that's happening uh, as you're running around your layout, you know, if you look at your distance and compared to time, you're going a long way in 10 seconds depending on your speed. So, so again, just something to keep in mind. Passive minimum and passive maximum are the amount of time that it's going to be off in between the time that it plays. So it's going to be off for at least 50 seconds, and it will be off for at the maximum 150 seconds. It will never go more than 150 seconds before it starts to play again. So, and these are all adjustable, and again, keep in, time that, that time scales, or keep in mind that time scales down. Um, but once you set that up, all of those sounds will play within 
um, you know, those allotted times, and it will be random. These are, it'll happen randomly between this time. So it's not always going to happen every 50 seconds. One time it could be 50, one time it could be 100, next time it could be 60, next time it could be 75, and that's for both active and minimum. So we have really tried to set up a, a truly random algorithm so that you're not hearing that monotony of that pssst, pss, every you know couple of seconds you know you, you get to be able to set your watch by it you, you don't want that um, in many cases again even though these things are happening mechanically for a reason it it becomes very monotonous in a lot of cases if you hear that same sound at the exact same time all the time so having some randomness is definitely a good thing it brings a lot of life to your models so so that's pretty much how you set it up um, again it's it's really not hard uh, you know and if even with those random features set keep in mind that you still uh, can also manually um, activate those sounds they don't it's not just random if you want to manually do it even though you have them set up as random you can still manually press the button i hope that's clear for everybody if you have any questions please reach out to us at support at have a great day bye now